Right, this one is the third video, I believe. Okay, we're talking about memory management over here. When we're referring to functions of the operating system and system software. So before you do this one, make sure you go over your notes on primary memory. You know what primary memory is and you know what the operating system is. And you have an overview of what memory management is about. I'm just waiting for you to go over your notes on that one. Uh, so the big questions for this video, primary memory is limited. So what are the possible options available in order to allow us to fit jobs into the RAM? Is paging better than segmentation? And then what is disk drive thrashing? So, remember, uh, main memory is non-volatile memory used to hold programs and data that is currently in use. Well, we're obviously referring to the RAM. There's a beautiful picture of a piece of RAM over there for you. So, the memory manager is the main function of the operating system that's actually responsible for handling the RAM for us. Okay, It has four main responsibilities. First, two go in a pair. Allocate memory to programs when they need uh, memory, primary memory, and then deallocate that space when it's no longer needed. Note we've said deallocate, not delete. Okay, so the contents of the RAM are maintained. Okay, as long as there is power there, all that's happened is they're marked as free, and that means a new process that needs to run can then use that space in the memory. Bearing in mind that the um, sorry, one second, here we go. Bearing in mind that um, that's why we initialize our variables, for example, because there could be contents in that in that memory location being pointed to uh, from the previous program that was being run. Okay, so the next thing is uh, what happens if there's not enough main memory, and we're going to be talking about virtual memory, and then the final um, uh, feature of the memory manager, which we're not going to talk about in this video, is about using buffers. So if two programs need to share data. For example, uh, your network client is going to download some data to then share with your browser, which is then going to share with Flash Player um, for you to watch videos or play games or whatever you're doing online. Okay, each of those programs needs to be able to share data securely. Uh, one program is not allowed allowed to look at the contents of memory belonging to another program for security purposes. Now. When we want to use primary memory, okay, we've got a couple of options available. So, for example, if we currently look, right, this is my, 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 uh, the state of my memory, okay. I've got my operating system taking up 64K, I've got 40K of free space, and I've got three other jobs taking up a certain amount of space. I've got job D over here, and job D needs 50K of memory. So, at the minute, I don't have enough space over there, um, in order to run it. Now, I've got a few different options available to me. The first option is that uh, I wait for a gap. Okay, so uh, we could wait for job uh, B to finish, and then once that job um, B finishes, and I've now got um, space, but actually I haven't got enough space, so I need to now wait for perhaps I don't know either job A or job C to finish, and then I can fit my job into one of those two spaces. Then uh, there's obviously a problem with that. Uh, the problem is obviously I'm wasting t valuable time because um, you know there is actually technically enough space for me to process job D, uh, so I should probably just get on with it. Now the option number two is that basically what I do is I move job A down, and then that gives me that enough free space, contiguous free space, because then I would have 40 plus the 20, which is 60k, enough space to fit job D and leave myself that 10k of free space um, for my um, for anything else that comes along however there's a problem with this which is that uh, with this option of moving jobs around and around to create enough contiguous free space which is that I'm wasting valuable processing time and power shuffling the contents of memory around I have a third option which is actually I break the job D up into two parts the first part can sit up here into that 40k of free space and then the second part can go down here into that 20k and then that leaves me 10k down here so you can see that uh, in fact let's just leave it there okay now um, in order to make this kind of um, process take place and allow me to split jobs up in RAM we're basically going to make use of something called pages okay so um, if you've got an x86 processor, uh, so your core Intel or whatever processors you have, uh, you know, you've got like a 
AMD, one of the new processors, whatever they are, they're all kind of using the same, um, even if they're 64 bit, they're still um, dividing the RAM up into 4K pages. Okay, so for example, uh, my RAM could now be divided up according to this kind of diagram I've got over here. So the first section of RAM uh, we're going to say is protected because that's where the operating system goes, and then from my first set of pages over here, so page one. Is going to be free space one. Uh, I've got 40k of free space, so that's going to go all the way along up to page number 10. So page number 11 is going to be the first page for job uh, uh, A, and then page 12 will be the second job, so on and so forth, until my 92k of pages is used up, and then I'll start using filling up pages for job B, etc. Okay. Now, so what actually are pages? They're equal size physical divisions of the memory that's your definition of primary memory I should say okay or the main memory for whatever terminology you're using now that kind of gives us um, that ability to be able to split a job across pages because now I've got my 4k page sizes well I know that there's going to be 10 pages over here for uh, the first part of job D and then I've got 20k down here which is five pages um, over there and so uh, job D the second part of job D is going to take up three pages and then I'm going to have 8k of free space those of you who do the maths would have already seen straight away that hang on a minute if we put 40k up here then we only had 10k left over but remember those jobs are going to those each of those pages is 4k in size that's the worst k I've seen in my life right so um we, uh, you know, we, we, there's some, there's an issue there that we're going to come back to in a couple of minutes. Now, we're going to take a little bit of an aside to talk about virtual memory, and then we're going uh, to go back to the concept of pages and how pages can help with virtual memory. Okay, so if you remember what virtual memory is, we don't have enough physical memory. Okay, we want to we want to use um, Excel and Word at the same time. Uh, to do whatever it is we're doing, we're watching a video with VLC and we're also browsing the web. So uh, I want to swap to Excel, well we don't have enough physical memory so we're going to stick the data for Word, because we're not using it at the moment, into the virtual memory over here on the secondary storage and that allows us to then swap uh, Excel into the RAM in order to allow us to continue with and whatever it is we're trying to do then when we're done we can swap the other way around okay so virtual memory basically is where we're using secondary storage as primary memory when we don't have enough physical memory available this is the most basic definition okay and we're going to build upon that a bit now obviously the advantage of this is that we're running programs uh, or we can use resources that are larger than the actual amount of physical memory that we have installed in our computer system now if we're thinking about pages can pages make this process more efficient? So if we go back to my hypothetical computer, okay, I've got a 192k job that I want to process. I've only got 40k of free memory. Then over here, job D also, job B, sorry, finishes. So I now got that extra 20k of memory. What I can then basically do is take uh, 40k and put it here into this first available free space. Put 20k down into this second available free space. And what's happened now is that actually I only need to fit. 132k of job uh, D into the virtual memory so I'm reducing the amount of secondary storage that I need or you can also say that I'm reducing uh, or I'm going to improve the performance of my computer by having less reliance on virtual memory so now if we're using virtual memory okay we're now going to break apart break down that GCSE definition of swapping programs that are not in use and we're actually going to say we're swapping pages that are not in use okay so at the minute I could actually have different programs open you can see I've got three different programs available okay but there are sections of each program that I'm not using so instead of putting the whole program into virtual memory I'm just going to put the pages that I'm not using into virtual memory so now, if um, I need to now use page B4, but I no longer need the instructions that are in B1, then the memory manager will move B1 into the uh, secondary storage and take B4 out and put it into the main memory. Okay? This thrashing occurs when, for example, B1 has a uh, call to B4, so B4 needs to be loaded into the virtual memory, into the RAM, but then B4 
has a call to B1. And so these pages then start um, calling each other and then we have this kind of loop of the same pages being moved backwards and forwards, being swapped backwards and forwards between RAM and the virtual memory. Okay, And this can cause disk flashing when you damage the disk. So just building up that definition that we were talking about earlier. So we use the secondary storage as primary memory when there isn't enough physical memory available and any pages that are not currently used are swapped from the primary memory into virtual memory. Um, now the uh, performance of the computer is going to decrease when we're swapping pages between main memory and a backing store. All right. So we can see our pages make it slightly more efficient by not having to move the whole process backwards and forwards. However, that this thrashing can still occur. Okay, because remember the virtual memory is not as fast as pure use of primary memory. Now, going right back to those pages. Pages make it easy for us to track jobs because basically each page is of equal size. Okay. Um, the problem that we saw earlier though is that the code is not going to fit into 4K chunks because we only needed, um, for that second part of job D earlier, we only needed 10K. However, uh, it's not divisible by 4. So we ended up using uh, 3 pages. So if a page is smaller than uh, 4K, then using a procedure or page we're going to be wasting some of that 4K. And similarly, if a if we need have page uh, pr uh, procedures that are larger than 4K, then we're going to use more than one page, and we're going to end up wasting space again. So how do we overcome that? Basically, we can make use of what we call segments. And so segments are like pages, except for they're logical, and they vary in size based on the size of the contents. So one segment can be split across multiple pages, for example. right? This means that we're making more efficient use of the physical resources that we have available in our computer system. However, there are some associated problems. There's more sophisticated control needed because segments are just more sophisticated. Therefore, the programming uh, for segments are going to be much more complicated. And then we also have a problem where because seg uh, segments are not fixed size, we have difficulty actually predicting where segments begin and end. So, what's the similarities between pages and segments? Well, basically, they're both partition memory. They both can be used with virtual memory to swap programs. They allow both of them allow programs that are larger than the physical memory to run. Uh, they also allow us to split a process across wherever the free space is occurring in um, the primary memory. So we're fragmenting the processes. However, what is the difference here? Pages are where dividing the memory on physical lines, and segmentation divides the memory on logical lines. So you should now be able to know what the options are to fit jobs in the RAM. The, the three options where we're waiting for uh, space, there was the option of moving uh, processes around so that we can store jobs contiguously, and the third option where we are actually going to split jobs across wherever the free space is available, and then that allows us to take advantage of paging or segmentation, and you should have an idea about wh whether one is better than the other, or are they just as bad as each other. And then finally, wh uh, how, what is the relationship with virtual memory and disk thrashing?